Hi, I'm Sanira Madani, and I'm a mom of two, a daughter of an immigrant and an unlikely entrepreneur who went from scaling an idea to a billion dollar business. Yes, a billion dollar business. Along the way, I learned that less than 2% of female founders ever hit 1 million in revenue. And I became obsessed on a mission to change that. I believe that there is so much gatekeeping in business knowledge and that we as female entrepreneurs should be learning from other female founders and leaders who have broken the statistics. Since I never went to CEO school, I've had to learn it all the hard way, but you shouldn't have to because we believe that you deserve to have it all. And honestly, nothing bad happens when women make more money. Grab a seat because class is officially in session. Welcome to CEO School. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the CEO School podcast. I have such an incredible founder here with me today of 21 Seeds, a tequila beverage brand that honestly, I, I'm i obsessed with it. I've literally had it for like the last two nights here at the Female Founder Collective, and it is unlike anything that I've had. And I was like, we have to have the founder, Kat Hontas, here on the show. Her story is so incredible from being in the film industry to launching this tequila line to exiting within three years. This is like the fastest exit that I've heard of from start to finish. And she is just such a proponent of all things women in business and has zero gatekeeping on how the exit happened, what is important, and like all of her lessons. So I'm so excited to welcome Kat to the show today. Kat, welcome to CEO School. Oh my God, thanks you. I, first of all, what a great platform. This is <laughs> right. Um, like yes. where was this when we were getting started? Where was this when we were right. getting started? No, it, this is it. My, the audience is so incredible. Our community is so incredible. And I think it's just the best time to be a woman in business. I think we are, there is a revolution that is here. Women are uplifting women. We want to support women in businesses. I think everything from my skincare to the products in my fridge, to in my pantry, to the software that I'm using now, so conscious about supporting women's brands. And it is amazing to see the disruption that's happening. And also just as a woman, I do feel really supported by women. So I love this. It's the best time. And we're here today at Female Founder Day and got a chance to connect over the last last two days. And the conference has been so amazing. And Kat, so I'm just dying for the audience to hear about your start to exit. So, but before they get the exit part, which I know they're dying to hear, I would love to talk about your journey and how you went from being in film to starting a tequila brand. Totally. Um, so, uh, basically my whole career, like my first career, um, was really in film and television. And I had like a 15 year run in that industry, um, was able to make a film called taking five, which is really cute. It's about two high school girls who kidnap a boy band. Okay. Um, and so I think because I finally got a film made, I was a producer and you could you could spend 15 years just developing projects, having stuff set up at studios, but nothing ever gets made, mm -hmm. which kind of drives you insane, you know, because you just want to close the loop, right? Get that hit of dopamine. <laughs> yes. But um, so I think because I was able to make this movie, you can rent it on iTunes, uh, you know, on Apple, like I was able to leave that business, um, that that the, the the thing that prompted me to leave that industry was I found out uh, I was pregnant um, with my now son, and that was our first kid. And after I, we had moved from uh, LA, I had moved from LA to New York when I married my husband. And the industry in New York, the film industry was very different. Yeah, um, it was very much about like documentary films, important movies, yeah. you know, serious films that win Oscars. And that's not what I was making. I was making like. Horror, horror movies and like music driven movies, uh, kid comedies, like stuff like that. So it was a very different business. And at that time, the industry uh, was very much, a, it still is like an in person business. Like you weren't doing things over anything. Like you had to yes. be in person to so really get stuff driven. done. So relationship driven. Exactly. And that's just a piece of just the thing I learned is like really understanding what moves the needle in the industry, whatever industry you're in. Um, so I thought, you know what, this is a good time for me to bow out. I also, I'm Greek. Like I moved here from Greece as a kid. Um, my mother moved in with us when we had the kids, you know, so it's like total, my big fat Greek wedding, like <laughs> parents moved, like my mom moved in, helped me with my two kids. I have a daughter and a son. My, I have an older son, Elias, a daughter, Abigail. And, you know, the agreement that I had kind of made, like my husband and I made was like, I'll take defense, you take offense. So like I would be with the kids in the beginning. And then when I handed them over for offense, 
then he would kind of take charge. Um, and defense requires a lot more hands-on because you're yeah. keeping them alive. Like you don't <laughs> want them to, you know, something bad to happen. Yeah. And then offense, you can like kind of Relax manage from higher yeah. levels. So it's not like he'd have to leave yeah, his you job. Just call the plays. Exactly. And I really just believe like as women, we can have it all, but not at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's about like setting expectations, you know, figuring out who's doing what, like, and really the setting expectation piece is huge because if you do that and you do that ahead of time, then you're happier generally, yeah. I think, because you're not disappointed. You know, you don't, you're not constantly disappointed. So anyway, I left the business and I took, um, I don't even know, like it must've been 10 years off, you know, um, during that whole time, I've always been a very curious person. I've already always been entrepreneurial minded. Um, and my husband was a, in tech, uh, as a banker. So we were surrounded by entrepreneurs all the time. Yeah. And I think that's also a thing like, you know, as a woman who takes time off, I knew, I knew eventually I'd go back to work and do something. I knew I wasn't going to go back to the movie industry because like, again, it's all about your network and that, that train had left the building, right? Like those people were gonzo now. They like, so I'd have to go back. I'd have to meet all the people again. I'd start at the bottom again. So it just is hard. And I think that's why you see so many women starting businesses as like the return from whatever else being with doing. family yes. or whatever. Yeah. So which is great on the one hand, it's a lot more, you know, it's a lot more to take on as women. Like we have to balance a lot of things. I think we're really capable of doing it. You know, we're by design able to multitask, but yes. like still it's a big undertaking. And again, like expectations, but part of that is really like who you surround yourself with is really important, right? Like you surround yourself with entrepreneurs. I think eventually you're going to- Success gonna, begets success. Like you 100%. are 100% the company you keep. Your closest circle is going to have like the the effect on you. 100%. Like the, the, whether it's good or bad, yep. like your closest people, it's so important. People say that they recognize about their circles and that's why it's so important to be in the right rooms. And this is why I love doing this because this is how I get to connect with the most amazing women all the time. And the more I'm around it, guess what? That this is how deals happen. Like it's about the million dollars network, not just about having a million dollar business. Totally. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with you more. So you're, you're in the like, leaving, you're, you come back, you're like, I'm around entrepreneurs. Where did the tequila exactly. like, idea come from? Yeah. Right turn. Um, so that really came out of a need, right? So I, I was drinking, I was a wine drinker at that point. That's what, that's how, like, I look forward to my coffee every morning. Yes. Right. And at the end of my day, I want something to relax and unwind to. Yes. Like I love to cook. So like during dinner, I would, I love the whole ritual of holding a wine glass, yes. the whole thing. And I was drinking wine. Um, I'd I have think like, a lot of us here can relate to that. That is literally, I look forward to my coffee in the morning and I look forward to my glass of wine. And it is, it's a ritual. It's not, it's not about the wine. It's about the ritual. And it's about taking that the day is done. I get to relax. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I, I even like holding the yeah. wine glass, you know? So, um, but after, you know, I'd had Abigail, my, I have two kids after her, I was about 35 at the time. I, I just, it was affecting me very differently. So I would have a couple glasses of wine that night. I wouldn't sleep well. I'd have, I'd, I'd yeah. sweat. I'd wake up in the morning with like kind of a hangover, like a headache really. And I was like two glasses of wine. Like this is, I'm not over drinking, you know? So what's going on? I went to my doctor and again, um, I'm not a doctor. This, I, this is not a public service announcement on what yeah. you should be doing. If you would like to have a drink, go and figure it out with your doctor too. But like my, I went to my doctor, I'm like, is this menopause? Like what's going on? And he's like, no, no, just move away from fermented spirits. So, and that was a new term for me, yeah. you know? And he said, so like wine, beer, champagne, sake, a lot of these like truly these, these, you know, seltzers, a lot of what's in these, it's malt beverage. So that whole category, um, of spirits, which are called fermented spirits, um, they just have a lot of living stuff in them, right. That interacts with your living body. And as you get older, it just gets harder to metabolize that stuff. Okay. So I was like, okay, so then what should I drink instead? Yeah. And he's like, um, have a Blanco tequila. <laughs> oh like, my God. I want like your doctor. record scratch on the, you know, like needle on the record. It was like, Ew. have tequila and said, so instead of an apple a day, it's a tequila a day. That was what the doctor ordered. Hey, well, I'm not saying it. You're saying it, <laughs> but, but basically, you know, he's like, I was like, what? And to me, yeah. I was not drinking tequila 
at that point in my life. Like I really I wasn't even drinking I can hear my like, husband screaming because he's like, I'll tell you about my tequila story okay. shortly. Yeah. But I mean, it was like PTSD from college and I had just been done with tequila for a long time. I might have a margarita on occasion or a Paloma, something yeah. like in a cocktail. If I'm out, you know, I'm not making that at home. At home, yeah. Right. And so I thought, what am I going to do to this? I, I, I couldn't even smell the, the, the Blanco tequila. Yeah. That, that's, and I was looking for something, like you said, it was a ritual. It was like something to, I want, I was looking forward to. And that to me felt like tequila in general is like, hard, it feels harsh. It tastes harsh. It smells like all that stuff. And I was, yeah, it's like, I don't, that's just as, as if I'm not going to drink now. So it feels aggressive. So like, yeah, like tequila, to, exactly. like feels aggressive. And my husband, so my, my husband and my brother, they've switched to tequila for like a decade ago and they yep. swear that it's the same stuff that you're like no hangovers. It's the cleanest. And I would always have a glass of wine versus any like spirit. And then if I did, I would like have a vodka, but I feel like if I'm having like liquor, it's aggressive. Like for like a weeknight or whatever, like I would think about, and tequila reminded me of like, okay, I'm taking a shot of tequila, not necessarily like at home drinking tequila, but a glass of wine. I'm like, I'm just having a glass of wine. Totally. Like there's, it's it like was, permission to it's do It's permission it. versus like tequila, I'm like drinking hard alcohol. But my, like, I'm telling you, Faisal's gonna love this because he's like, no, you just drink tequila. I told, you. told you, drink tequila, drink good tequila. And I switched to tequila and I still drink wine, but I actually try not to drink because of the same, and I, do, I have certain styles of wine that I drink now, and um, like organic, I'm, biodynamic. I found not a U.S. Of those. based. Yeah, I'm like not drinking US-based. French. I'm like literally now, like I'm over California wine, and I'm like totally. literally trying to drink European wines. But we've switched. Really, like we're a tequila family, and you know, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you that it You're is. Like, but I play it, one on television. No. <laughs> it, I, I did not play one on television, uh, but it it does. It, it's a different. Like it, there's no headache and it's super clean and it's actually like lowering calories and all the stuff too. So exactly. Okay. So you were like tequila. So like, okay. So I go home with this and I stopped drinking the wine, felt hundred percent better. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to yeah. do to this Blanco tequila to make it enjoyable? Okay. And so I love to cook. I started infusing it, right? I would just take like fruits and vegetables, throw them into the tequila, let it sit overnight and let it infuse. And then it literally completely changed the way that the tequila tasted Amazing. and smelled. So it was like super smooth, like completely smoothed it out. So no more, you know, yeah. I, I was like, we shouldn't market this as an anti-wrinkle tequila because you don't make that awful face like when you drink it. So you're not getting wrinkles. But so it smoothed it out. It smelled like the things we were in, infu- like the fresh fruits that we were infusing it with, which was well, amazing. So it smelled great. And because I, I still love the ritual of holding the wine glass, what I would do is I would just take that infused tequila, put it in a wine glass with ice, and I would do, you know, one shot, which is 59 calories, okay? Top that with club soda and add a slice of orange. And that yeah. was my spritz. And so instead of a glass of wine, I was having, you know, this, what is yeah. now called a seed and soda. But at the time, it was just like a, my spritz, and it was as easy to drink as a glass of wine, you were at the same alcohol level, right? Because when you add the club soda, it's what you do alcohol by volume. And it was 59 calories. So it was like half the calories of a glass of wine. And I get all the flavor that I want. It smells great. I can still hold it in my wine glass like I want. So it just solved all my pain, my pain points. So I, I would have a couple of those and I'm only at like 120 calories. So I'm like winning versus yeah. like one glass of wine is usually So you're like making this in your kitchen. So take us, because like yeah. I, when I heard this, like you literally took that, from concept to exit, like literally within 36 months. Yeah. How did, like, what happened? Okay. So that's, okay. So the 36 months is from the time we brought the product to market, yeah. right? But I was drinking this and making it for my friends and family for like eight years. Okay. Just for, our, for yeah. like, that's how, now if you were to come to my house, I would set up basically what we call a seed and soda bar. So I'd put out all these infused tequilas I was making. I would put out a bunch of club sodas and like a charcuterie board. You're just like board. a better farmer's market. <laughs> totally. And you'd come and there'd be like, just like a charcuterie board of garnishes, all kinds of garnishes, like fresh mint and cilantro and basil, and then like slices of citrus and, you know, and slices of pineapple, like all watermelon. Like I'd put out all this stuff and glassware and different types of glassware and let people make their own drinks. It's by the way, the best way to entertain because you don't need a bartender and everybody's walking around with a different drink. Yeah. And, and you can do that now with us, right? So we have the Valencia orange, the grapefruit hibiscus and the cucumber jalapeno are our three infused I flavors. I loved the cucumber jalapeno. So yesterday. good, right? It was so good. It's peppery and it wasn't too spicy. It was so smooth. Yes. And I cannot believe that that was just over ice. Yeah. 
I know, crazy, right? Like I literally I thought that I was having like a a like a handmade like a yeah. A, a, a margarita at we we had a really beautiful dinner last night so just for those are like what are we doing we had it was such a beautiful that dinner nice. at like the navy like shipyard Food 52, you guys yeah it was i want to unbe- live there <laughs> unbelievable with like rebecca and just like the whole scene and ali and it was so beautiful but i did not know that was the tequila it's, i thought it was like a fancy beverage yeah, like yeah. i didn't know that yeah yeah it was no. so good and that was the thing so so basically for like you know nine years i was just making it and you know, I had my, obviously what ended up happening was a lot of my friends, my girlfriends, especially, and guys I knew who were looking to move away from beer. So like away from carbs and, and gluten and stuff like that were moving to tequila. And so if I was making a batch, they'd be like, oh, can you make me a batch? Like make me a bottle, make me a bottle. So I was like, you know, making a lot of, if I was yeah. making a batch of infused tequila for myself, I'd make a bunch for friends too. So I, I was doing that at that point. The kids were still little, so I wasn't really looking to go back quite yet. Um, again, it's about having that support. You know, it's really important. Like when as women, we go back to work or we're going to start a business for goodness sakes. It's like it takes a lot. It takes a village. And so we weren't there yet. And so I hadn't I wasn't thinking about starting a business then at that point. But I was noticing. So you're like literally sitting on this for eight years. Yeah. Just making it for my friends and my- What was the yeah. moment that you're like, okay, we are bottling this? Exactly. So I remember being at a bar and looking around at the bar and people, I noticed like, and again, I'm very, I'm always like, I'm very curious. I'm paying attention all the time. So I was just sitting at the bar and I noticed that probably six of the 10 people who came up to order a drink, uh, the girls, like almost a hundred percent of the girls were ordering tequila, soda, and like a splash of juice, tequila soda, three limes, tequila soda, slice of orange. Slice of orange is what yeah, I do. Exactly. I do tequila soda, slice of orange. You would love the Valencia orange yeah. then. That's going to be your, that's your jam. The Valencia orange soda slice. That's what I drink every night. Yeah. That's exactly what I drink every night in a wine glass. So I noticed that, that that's how the, the majority of the people, again, were not guys. It was girls. It was girls ordering this and it was a spritz. And at that time, so this is like 2018, at that, that time, like, George Clooney had sold yes, Casamigos, Casamigos to Diageo who yeah. bought us. That's who bought us is Diageo. And um, everybody, tequila was being positioned sort of like whiskeys, you know, like you sip them. So, and marketed to men. Like that was the innovation. Yeah. It was like, hey, this is high end tequila that you're going to sip like a whiskey and you're going to market that to men. And I was like, huh, I don't see anyone ordering it that way. <laughs> Not one human. Like, it's like, yeah. you're even, trying to change the cat. Even yeah. the guys that were ordering it were ordering Bring a tequila soda. soda. Yeah. So I was like, who's sipping it? Like, when does that happen? You know, what's that occasion? Like, maybe once in a while. So I thought, huh, they're actually drinking it the way that I drink it. And mine tastes better. Like, mine, you're winning with me because A, we're 35% instead of 40, and the f- infusion does that. So, your lower ABV, and that's really where the calories come from, is the alcohol content in it. So it already tastes better because it's infused. Uh, it's lower calorie. Like, why why wouldn't I just make this? Like, I think it would work. And so that was the moment where I was just like, okay, I think there's a, a, a white space here. Yeah. And so, but I, I was like, but I don't want to do this by myself. So let me think about some mm-hmm. people I might do this with, you know? And... Um, Obviously, my one co-founder is my sister, so it didn't have to look very far. I know you're in business with your brother. Yes. Like, so I was like, okay, she was a CFO at that time. She was a CFO of Angelist, and uh, she had been the CFO and the COO of Britain Co. She was the CFO of Refiner29. So she was really in this space of like online media and just startups. So I was like, okay, sister, do you want to start a tequila? This. Yeah, yes. I was like, do you want to start a tequila company? And she's like, I love your tequila. Yes, let's do it. Um, and then we needed somebody to really help us scale this and who, who, and I, I, again, because I was surrounded by sort of entrepreneurs and that, um, Sarika, our other co-founder, also a mom that I knew socially, but we would always talk about ideas and stuff. Uh, she had done the, the seaweed snacks. Those like, give me, you know, like flat seaweed snacks. She'd done that. And so I was like, Hey, do you want to start a tequila company? Sarika. She's like, I love your tequila. Yes. So when the th- so the three of us I decide. I love your tequila. Yes, I, know, I love yeah, that. Like, That's sure. the answer. Yes. At the time, she was working on like a quinoa crouton, and she's like, "I'm kind of bored with that." So yeah, let's do this instead. This is more. My fun. nephews love the seaweed chips. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah, and I love them too. So we took a walk in the tequila aisle, and we just noticed that there was 
A, nothing like this in the aisle. Really, there was there, there were some flavored tequilas on the market. They all kind of tasted bad, if I'm being honest, right? But overly sweet, very sugary. Yeah. Have this weird aftertaste, like your second. I think that everything that's infused that I've had, even in every category, yeah. tastes overly processed. It processed, sweet. Yeah. And those are all like, you know, we're in the category technically of flavor, but we're really infused in those. A lot of those are just flavored and there's a big difference. And the thing about that is I think the industry, and this this is where like being women outsiders and we have different palettes than men, you know, and we have um, just different perspectives. Like we, we discover brands in different places. So there's so much that while the industry that I went, that we went into, which is tequila and spirits is very male dominated. Our female perspective and palette is what gave us the competitive advantage mm. to do what we did so quickly because we were like, there's a hole here. The industry thinks that because women don't like harsh, they want sweet. We don't want yes, sweet. Yes, we don't want we sweet. We don't want sweet. We want balance. Smooth. Yes. We want smooth is what we yes. want. Yes. Oh my God. I love so, that. Yes. We don't want sweet. Bingo. Yes. So, you know, everything that they were bringing to market was sweet and it was like, oh, yuck. So we knew we would win on product. And that, by the way, is the key, right? Like you got to so get the product, product right? good. You've got the co-founders. Got the co-founders. We understood the positioning. You know, we were really going to go after that female consumer because that's who we knew was drinking it. Mm -hmm. And no one was speaking to her in the aisle. Like nobody, this was a consumer that was being ignored in the tequila aisle. So we thought, okay, we know how to do this. Uh, and so armed with that, we, you know, we went out and, and, we had to learn everything there was to know about the spirits industry because we knew nothing. We were outsiders. So that was the first thing we did. We just talked to anybody who would talk to us on all sides of it because it is a highly regulated industry. Um, your, your, your first customer is not your ultimate customer. And I know that happens with a lot of the folks that are listening here. It's like we as a supplier, uh, maker of tequila, we sell to the distributor. That's our customer. And that is a very male, male, male dominated uh Category. Category yeah. of people. And then they sell to the to the bars, restaurants, and the retailers. They sell it. Mm -hmm. So and then ultimately the final customer, who is our also our customer, is a mom, is who we're going for, right? Like women and moms. And so it's very different, right? Like we have to market on two levels. And I know that that's the case with a lot of people that make products that have wholesalers and then ultimately yeah. customers. So you have to think about it in that way. And so we had to think about it that way and how we positioned it and stuff. But um, so ultimately, you know, we learned everything. And there I'll just say my 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 two cents are just like, talk to everyone, every single person, even people who like failed at what they tried to do. You know, it, we learned something uh, from one conversation that at first we were sort of like, well, that person didn't, I mean, they didn't really succeed. So like, what advice are they going to give us? And something that they told us ended up saving us a bunch of time. If we hadn't talked to that person, we would have never known it. And that would have pushed out our launch by six months, you know? So we talked to everybody. Also, don't be afraid to share your idea. A lot of people are like, oh, maybe somebody's going to steal my idea. I'm just I got you. asked that this morning off stage was like, you know, I'm so afraid because if I share this idea, then someone else is going to like really grow it or take it. And I'm like, no, girl, no one's there. No one's thinking about your idea. Like Nobody. only you are thinking about exactly. your idea. Exactly. And let like let the competitors come. You have a differentiating edge. And if you're going to not talk about it, that's what's holding you back, not that potential competitor. Correct. Yeah. That's 100% true. So. so I love that advice. You just spoke to everyone, got everyone. this product to market. Yep. And how did it scale? Like, how did you get the, like, how did the exit happen? Yeah, yeah, totally. So we launched in April of 2019. And then, like you said, so three years later, we sold the company actually March 31st. So like to the day, basically, like just shy of three years, right? Like if we'd sold on the 19th, it would have been exactly three years, but like three years basically uh, from start to finish. Now, through that, the pandemic happened, yes. right? Which actually helped helped us, right? It really accelerated um, us, not just from like the fact that so many people got tired of drinking wine. So just that leap into spirits in the home, like you were saying, yeah. um, you know, we're not used to bringing spirits in the home as much as, you know, drinking a cocktail yeah. at a bar. And this now made people realize like, oh, you could bring 21 seeds into the house, make the spritz. People were looking for cocktails to make. We were making, a, you know, cocktails online, like on social media, like pushing yeah. out easy cocktail recipes. And that's the thing with 21 seeds is that it's a super easy 
spirit to use. It's an infused tequila. You cannot mess it up. And there isn't a drink, a cocktail you can't make with it. So like we have a delicious espresso martini that we make with our Valencia orange that like leaves your breath smelling like beautiful oranges instead of like feeling you need to go brush your teeth, you know? So we can do that. We can make a Negroni with the Valencia orange. And I've always loved Negronis, but I don't like gin. So how can I go into that and have that cool, sexy drink in a glass, you know, with the orange? It's like so pretty. So we can make any cocktail that there is uh, because these these are these these spirits are so unique. It's just like if you have a grapefruit, orange, cucumber, jalapeno, there's nothing really you can't do. I love do. your passion for your tequila. Like obsessed. I feel like you're 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 you like, are you're obsessed. totally obsessed. I've had it. They're amazing. Congratulations yeah. on the exit. Now post like I have some like so you've obviously had a ton of success. It happened really quickly. Um, I, by the way, I love the branding yeah. girls call the shots. Like that is it. You're so focused on your story to help women at like, you know, no, no matter what stage you're at in your life, you're not an entrepreneur. Like you can get, you can get started later. Like you didn't, you pivoted your career, um, all of the things and the success ended up happening. The exit ended up happening. I've got so many questions about this. Can you tell me a time that like it almost didn't work. Like give me a story that you were like, oh my God, we almost truly like messed this up. Um, my God. So obviously with us, that's a tricky one for us because um it happened so fast and everything yeah. just kind of lined up. Everything for us. did line up. Yeah. So I don't think we really had that moment. I wish I had, you know, I mean, I love, I love like failures okay. and pivots. But that said, I will say this. There were some things that made it. So we did, so we, so it did happen so fast. Like number one is I think you, you, you either don't lie to yourself. Like you either fail or succeed kind of quickly. And, and then if you are, if you have a failure, you have to pivot quick and then try something else right away. But like, if something's going to hit, it actually hits pretty fast. Right. So like that first, we got into BevMo. That was our first customer in California. We live in California. You can buy spirits in grocery store in California. You can't do that in every state. So we got into BevMo. By the end of that summer, we were like the number one flavored tequila at BevMo. But, and so it wasn't just like when you launch a brand, everyone you know is probably going to buy it. And then their friends might buy it. That's not a brand, yes. right? Like you have to be beyond, like no one, someone who's never even heard of you, right? Like really don't sell yourself. Don't talk to yourself in that way. Cause then that's just going to prolong a painful like existence. So a, we knew it worked right away. So once we knew that we're like, okay, now double down. Right. The other thing is we were very focused on our consumer. So many times people would say, like, what about the guys? What about the guys? We're like, great, when we have endless marketing budgets, we'll focus on the guys. Yes. Cause you know what? This tequila is for everyone. Guys but love But you can't market, to you market you to everyone. You cannot market to everyone. You cannot market to everyone. That is such an important piece so of important. advice. You have to stay in your category, your lane, be the expert in your niche. Like if you can nail that, then you can go off and expand it, whatever, but you don't need it because the consumers, like there's so much you can go. I would rather go, what is it? Like, you know, nine feet deep than like then nine feet wide. Like I would 100%. rather go deep than wide. Yes. Cause then that, that then everything ladders up to that. Yes. If you have one consumer, you know, when that consumer shops, you know, where they hang out, you know, where they discover brands. And we were super, super focused on that, which allowed our money to go further. Right. So we didn't have to keep raising and all of that. Then the, the other thing is, is like, so we didn't have a celebrity, right? And in spirits, there's a yes, lot of celebrities there now. there is. How did right? you grow a brand without having exactly. the George Clooney exactly. or the Kendall Jenner? Like all the tequila, yep. all the Bev spirits. Like yes. every celebrity has a tequila. Yes. So it goes back to who our consumer was. We're like, women, what's the deal with women? They love to tell their friends about things. Yes. So we tapped into like our investors. Like we went after women big time, female investors, because we knew like if we could bring them into – the brand, then we would be tapping into their extended their network. Exactly. And so we did that. And I'll just a little plug for AngelList, which is where Nicole was. The beauty of AngelList and that model is that you can get, you can create, I she's going to kill me because I'm going to butcher it. It's like an SVP or something. Yeah. You create like, is that what it's called? Yes. And an so SVP. you can get many, it's many a people. It's yes. a syndicate. And you can get many, many people in, in at lower dollar SPV, amounts. SPV, specialty purpose Pers- vehicle. Yes. SPV. What that allows you to do is like, open it up to someone who can only put in, who wants to put in $5,000. Yeah. Normally you wouldn't put that person on your cap table because when you go to sell or do anything, you can't have a hundred people. On yeah. Your you got to get a hundred approvals. This way you have all that ladders up to one person. So 
that's a great way to bring a lot of people into your brand and create the amplified effect of like, say, a celebrity, which, you know, we didn't have. And um, and so we did that. And then equally as important, you you got to choose your you should say right up front to your investors, like I'm taking your money. I'm also the steward of your money. So I'm going to grow the business. And this is not just a handing out product for free thing. Right. Like. Because we're a tequila company, you could imagine like, yeah. I'm an investor, send me some, some tequila. tequila. And it's like, nope, we're not sending you tequila. You have to buy it. And quite honestly, I'm expecting you to buy it. Yes. So like choose your investors wisely. You don't just want money. You want people who are going to actually help you. Yeah. Right. And that's really important because you're, and I, I understand that's like hard, easier to say than do because you're like, at that point, I'll just take the money because I need money. But like in the end, you know, you, if you can, it's important, at least set expectations then. If you're going to take the money, like just set the expectations. Yes. Say, here's what I expect from you. I'm going to let you invest and here's what I expect. Guys do it all the time. They do. I love this. And then how did you get like, like how did, how did the deal happen? Yeah. So again, we, we, and we still are. A lot we, of women became, here like dream of that exit, yes, right? So yes, take yes, us through yes. like how that, like, how did you end up meeting them? What was, how long was that process? Like, like these women here, like everyone's got the most incredible companies. And I hope that whatever exit looks like for them happens. How did you actually make an exit happen? Exactly. So um, the first thing was the way we made it happen is we became the number one flavored tequila on the market. Just be the best. Like, you have be, to be so number good, one. they can't ignore you. That, that, and That's it. when you become number one, you get on the leaderboard, you yeah. know? And and the thing to remember there is that you got to go into it. Think You have to go in with it, into it, saying, I'm going to be the number one flavored tequila. I'm going to be the number one skincare brand that uses this ingredient, right? I'm going to be the number one um, beer company in Los Angeles. Like, Pick something and then be the number one in that. that. So like if you're going to be in Whole Foods, are you the number one olive oil in Whole Foods? So like whatever you're doing, you have to have a win. You have to put wins up on the board. So once you become number one at Whole Foods, then you go over to, you know, Air One and you're number one there or Trader Joe's. You got to be number one. But if you're not number one, no one's really coming to you. It's a much harder situation, you know? So because we were number one, so that was what we were focused on. Be number one. You got to be number yeah, one in be something. Be so good they cannot ignore you. That in is something. It. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be in the whole country. Yeah. But like if you're not the number one in say even a city or then what are you, you know, then, then, then you're hoping that the consumer is a collector and they're not. Consumers have limited dollars and they spend, if they're not, if they're buying you, they're not buying something else. So you got to get out of the mentality that like, I made this incredible product. It's incredible. Therefore, people will buy it. That's not how the world works. You got to, you got to be like, they can't live without this. They're not buying Sauvignon Blanc. They're buying 21 seeds instead. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we were like, Okay, great. That's a good hypothesis. But are they really doing that? Yes, because we're number one, and we're we're bringing we're taking from the wine category. So whatever you can see, your buyers can see. So you were number one, and yeah. did Diageo reach out? Yeah. So Diageo reached out to us. They reached out pretty early, and then we said no initially, and then they reached out again. At that point, we were really on the leaderboard, and so at that point, multiple buyers had reached out, which is a really nice position to be in yes. because. Then you can really evaluate each. Can buyer. you talk about the numbers for the exit? Yeah, so it's actually it's actually it's actually public now. So um, we were just a Harvard Business School case study, which is Amazing. really cool, exciting. So it was yeah, thank you. It was published then, but um, but yeah, so we sold it for one hundred and sixty million dollars. Look at that! <laughs> Congrats, and it's you and your co-founders and your sister. Yeah, you got to do it with your sibling. Yeah, twenty one. By the way, I don't know if you know this is my lucky number. I was born September twenty first. The twenty one is oh, my nice. lucky number, and so I'm like and upset. nine twenty one. Nine is divisible by three. Oh, look at that. So you've got all the, all. And so it's 21. So it's 21. Um, And how is it like working with your sister and having this like big family win? Uh, It's awesome. I mean, listen, she is, I I mean, I trust her totally, which is a, which is also something you need in a CFO, right? Um, She totally compliment, like she does all the things I hate to do. Like, and truly like I'm obsessed about making the cocktails and marketing brand, the brand, and she's obsessed with the numbers. So like sometimes I'll just be like, can we have an open mindset conversation for a minute before you shut that down? You know, based on numbers uh, solely. Um, So we, you know, we poke fun. It's the question is, how is it for Corsarica who works with two sisters who basically like are always like sort of 
bickering and like. But she probably became like your third sister. So we have totally. a third co-founder yeah. who's not a biological sibling, but always becomes like, yeah. like it's just, it's part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you do want to make sure that they're in a totally different lane than you. Because yes. I could see if like she yes. also is really focused on brand, then we would be, it would be, it wouldn't You'd be, be fighting. productive. Yeah, exactly. You'd be fighting. Well, congratulations on the big exit. What's next? Next is continuing to build 21 Seeds. Like we're, we're, you know, we're still, you know, very involved with the brand at Diageo and, um, you know, getting it into, into more households, making sure that people understand how easy it is to use 21 Seeds. You can find us now nationwide. We're, we're pretty much nationwide in most retail places. Um, we're starting to be more in bars and restaurants. So look for us there and even ask for us there and just try it and gift it, gift it. The one thing I'll ask of all women is, you know, instead of a, a, a bottle of wine, uh, at that next dinner party you go to, or as that next gift that you give, give a bottle of 21 seeds instead. It's, a, it. it's a much cooler gift. It is a it's much cooler gift. It's very 2023. Gift. Or is it, are we 24? It's, it's 2024. It's very 2024. Oh yeah. my goodness. This was so fun, Kat. Thank you so much for being on the show today and being so generous with just your background and your story. Um, it's really inspiring. I know a lot of women here are building things and you know it's it's not always easy and it's fun to see it's fun to see other women win and then do it and close the loop and just share that part of it. Um, I didn't get to ask, um, you know, what is like one piece of advice you would go back to give yourself to like, if, was there anything you would change or do differently within the last that, that, cause yours was so short. It was it's like so a different, short. I know exactly. it's a different interview that I'm having. Like I'm not used to even being like, cause there's so many pivots and pitfalls through it all. My journey was 10 years and like scaling my first company. So like, is there anything you would do different or give advice for a different or like looking back? Yeah, I would probably say, um, I I was not a good hirer of like people like the the, the people that worked for me directly. Um, so I would have like I should have defaulted to what Nicole you know Nicole my sister has this great way of hiring people, but she kind of left me to my own devices. She's like, you're not gonna end up working well with that person. And I was like, no no you don't know sister. Um, and she but so I would have listened to her way of doing it, which is this color theory way of hiring. So if you have not if you guys don't no know I don't know this. this okay it's a easy it's an easy Google search. Tell me it's it's called like the color theory. Okay. Um, the color theory, I think it's color theory on personality type, um, in business. And so depending on what you are, like I'm a yellow, so I'm a dreamer. And I only know this because of Nicole, she's an expert in this, but it, in Silicon Valley, they, a lot of tech companies use this and it's actually a really, really effective way to hire people because so I'm yellow, I'm a dreamer. I'm a, I'm going to inspire you to like come along on this journey. I'm a great, those, those yellows are great salespeople. They're great like marketers. And how do yeah. you know you're a yellow? Because you do this test. You do the assessment. Yeah, you do okay. the assessment. Nicole's a blue, my sister. She's like very black and white. She's a numbers person. And so you want that in your CFO. You don't want a yellow, like a dreamer your sales, yeah. being your CFO. And you don't want your blue, yeah. you know, being, and then there's like, uh, empathies and the, like, and I think that's a green and empathetic people are great in HR. Like that's who you want in HR and like really managing people. So it's a really, really great way to hire. And of course, because I'm the stubborn or the older sister, I was just like, I don't need you to tell me how to hire my team, you know, like, and I should have totally done that because it would have saved us. Like that was the one headache was like my hiring. I, I was really bad at hiring. And then the Nicole would have to like, kind of like fix everything. <laughs> You know, because I have like serious abandonment issues. I'm like, you have to fix this. I can't, I can't say these things to this person. Oh my goodness. Thanks so much for, for sharing all the advice. We're all going to be gifting 21 seeds and I cannot wait to have it at all our cocktail parties and all the things. Done. Congratulations on the exit and the success and working with your amazing, you know, co-founders and all the stuff that you do for women. Girls call the shots. I love we it. Do. We do. Let's we call do. the shots. Let's take the company to exit. We'll see you guys next time on CEO School. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you loved it, leave us a review. We are so proud to bring you authentic conversations, game changer expert guests, and valuable content on and offline. The best compliment you can give us is by screenshotting today's show and tagging us on Instagram at CEO School and at Sanira Madani. We are obsessed with swag, so don't be surprised if we want to send you some. Thanks for tuning into class today. And remember, nothing bad happens when women make more money.